hey, my husband just built a toilet tower. He's gonna put it right here. Let's go check it out. I've received a diagram of the uh, the order. Uh, so it's le tour de toilette. Um, and it's just a simple, basic, like, shelf kind of thing that'll go, um, like, in here will be the toilet. So it'll go right over the toilet and be about six feet tall um, so that we can just put stuff on it. Um, start out really simply, just boards and jointing them. Um, it's really the first project, so it's like a low risk kind of thing, really cheap wood, but it's going to be functional. So uh, if I mess up, I mess up. If it doesn't look perfect, it doesn't look perfect, but it'll be functional. This is white wood. White wood's kind of like a mystery number. To make this shelving unit, I, we're going to use just some 6 by 12 boards, 6 foot 12 by 1 boards. Um, they're just uh, white wood. The tools that I'll be using will allow me to make dovetail joints and dado joints. Um, in order to make the dovetail joints, I will be using a bevel marker. It allows me to make even angles across the, the face of the board. For that, I'll en end up using my saw as well as uh, my chisel that I'll be using. In addition to uh, the dovetail joints, uh, the chisel will be used for the dado joints. Even though the boards are 1 by 12, uh, as usual they are actually under 1 inch and these are actually just shy of 3 quarter inch. Um, so I'll use a chisel that's smaller than 3 quarter inch because the dado joints need to be exactly 3 quarter inch. To help with the dado joints, once I get to the point where I need to flatten the the base of the joint. I will use a poor person's router that I made. Uh, this was according to the instruction video that Paul Sellers made. Um, it's literally just drilling a hole at a roughly 45 degrees into a piece of wood and jamming a chisel through. And then you can adjust it with a hammer uh, or a mallet to uh, push along the face of the board, or the, not the face, but along the joint that you're making so that the bottom ends up flat and the same height all across. For the dado joints, I also have a marking gauge that I made. I found a piece of uh, like a broom handle or something in a closet here uh, that came with the house uh, and also bought some poplar so that I have a couple pieces of hardwood in here. And this little thing allows me to shift the length of this. Typically it'll be closer up to the pin and I'll set this pin to that three quarter inches or the width of the boards so that I can create the right depth or the right width of the dado joint. Um, and it'll be even for all of the dado joints on all of the sides that I do. And then last but not least, the planes. I did a slight camber on this Stanley SB4 that I got off eBay and fixed up. And what I did for the camber is I tilted the iron when I was sharpening it so that it has a slight curve to it. Uh, supposedly that makes it so that you don't get tracks when you're planing a large face um, because it slowly, go, like gradually tapers away from the board rather than doing a, a hard line. The dovetails will go into the top of this, so what I need to do is cut out the equivalent of what the dovetails will be. I adjusted the marking gauge to the width of, just under the width of uh, one of the other boards. So it's, there should all be the same width, so just under that, and I was able to take it, put it up against here, and it'll be exact to the thickness of the board so the dovetails will be flush with the top here. That's the goal anyway. Yeah, that's the goal. So these are the rough cut um, inserts for the dovetails to go into. Uh, the top board will slot into each one of these and this also has to get cleaned up because they're obviously not even. I feel good. I think uh, with 
more practice and better tools, uh, it would go a lot better. I planed the edges of these boards, the ends of these boards, to be as square as I could get them. And now I'm using the edges of the boards themselves to trace out the dado so that it's the correct width. So I just use the, the board and the pencil, pull it up, and then I've got my dado width. This line here in the middle is just to mark the middle of what I wanted to do. This nice and up to the edge there. So now I have my dado right up to the edge, and then I can use the square here. Take the square up to this. Now this line isn't going to be all the way through. I won't go all the way through on this. A set distance equal on every side. So this is what this Flintstone toy thing is for, the marking gauge. And what I do is I just decide how deep I want to go here, and I'm just going to go about halfway. So I get that, push in my pin here, that marks the dado joint for how deep, and then I take a light pass here, a little heavier. And then a third one, nice and heavy. So now I've got a little marking gauge mark right there and that's as deep as we'll go. This joint is easier and supposedly the one that is used for shelves. Okay, so we've got two joints on this. One are the dovetails, which are basically like taking your fingers and interlacing them. And the other is the dado joint, which is slotting the shelves into the sides of the sides. What we're gonna do now is put everything together. Uh, everything has been fitted, and now it's time to see if it'll all come together uh, evenly. Probably won't, 
but it'll be good enough. Try something. You made it to spec. <laughs> I like it. I'm nervous that those are gonna fall out though. That bottom one. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said kind of sucked. Do you think you could just put glue in it? Yes, I know I can just put glue in it. You don't want to though? I don't want to. But... Okay. The bottom shelf was pretty messed up. Uh, I messed up one of the dados so it was too big. So I redid the shelf so that it would fit a lot better. Um, and then I planed down the sides uh, as best I could with what I have. I need to do some better sharpening and bevels on the um, plain irons. And then uh, made sure everything fit, planed down the sides, made the, the edges of the actual shelf itself uh, beveled so that it's easier to grab and carry. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and because it's a little loose in a couple of the joints, I'm going to use some glue to keep it all together. I am applying boiled linseed oil um, and doing my best to get it as even as possible. I don't have a fancy rag, I'm just using what I got. Um, but there's a little bit of excess in spots, it should soak in. Uh, the boiled linseed oil helps protect it as well as um, give it, bring out the natural colors, uh, pine or white wood really won't have like too much cool change to it, but it'll help protect it, help seal it from water um, a little bit. I'm gonna... How do you feel about it? I feel pretty good. For a first furniture construction with joinery and stuff, I think it went fine. Looking forward to improving my skills. <laughs>